Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with friends, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Thank you. Thought I'd take a few minutes to look at uh, my Camp King knives. Uh, these are all the four blade Camp King knives that I have. Well, actually, I have another one over here, but it's a duplicate of this one, so we don't need to see them all. Um, the Camp King brand has actually been around for quite some time. It's always been a uh, brand of Imperial, even though you'll also see some that will say Hammer brand on it. The Hammer brand was also a uh, brand that was picked up by Imperial after the New York Knife Company uh, closed down in 1931. Sometime around the late 30s, early 40s, I think, uh, Imperial started using the Hammer brand uh, uh as one of their brands and it was uh actually on their lower end knives which was a pity because a uh, hammer brand under new york knife company was usually used on their higher end knives okay with that over with let's uh take a look at the camp kings we'll start with one of the older ones that i have this is the oldest one i have actually and you notice it has a brass liners and carbon steel back springs and uh, actual um, scales on there, or handles rather. Um, and the handle looks like to be some kind of uh, bake-like kind of material that is supposed to look like stag. Uh, I do not know if this originally came all black or not. I'm assuming not. It looks like it was actually made this way. Notice it is actually a pinned on handle with uh, brass pins going on. Um, and the... Um, the uh, Camp King um, shield is actually pinned into there too with both ends kind of uh, tapped around and then pushed into the uh, the bake light. And uh, actual bolsters um, appear to be like stainless steel or possibly nickel silver, most likely stainless steel bolsters. This is uh, still an economy knife. Uh, brass liners, a removable wire style uh, bale going on here and then carbon steel blades and you'll notice that the uh, the cap lifter screwdriver is on the same end as the uh, main blade um, later on the can opener will end up on this end that that will happen after world war ii um, the can opener we have is the old style uh, can opener and it's a two-piece can opener with a riveted uh, thumb stud for uh, opening and closing it um, and then uh, you've got your uh, your punch or all blade down here too now uh, despite it being a um, an economy knife you'll notice that it kind of has a swedge well it has a swedge on one side of the blade uh, the 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 uh, the shield side of the blade has a swedge, so that's kind of the show side, but the back side of the blade is just uh, flat. There's no swedge on the back side, which is kind of a, a bummer, but uh, it's also something that you saw in a lot of, uh, of economy knives, um, a, a, a false swedge on one side of the blade. It does have a nice long pull, and you see there imperial providence rhode island like i said this knife dates from before world war ii so sometime in the 1930s this is uh was made this is one of the earlier camp kings that you'll find and um uh, as knives go it's in pretty uh you know uh, for an economy knife it was really well made for the time of course uh other knives at that time this would have been instead of a plastic handle it would have probably either been bone or actual stag uh it would have been a higher grade uh steel and the um the swedge would have been a complete swedge there would have probably been half stops going on with it and everything else um but still for a camp king you can definitely feel the weight in it and everything else that brings us to a post world war ii camp king and this is one in the hammer brand uh, again still imperial but by hammer brand and now we have the familiar um, uh, removable bale these actually started showing up before world war ii but 
continued all throughout the uh, rest of the life of the uh, Camp King. Now this one is a little bit different than the, your typical one because if you notice, we're still looking at brass liners going on with this thing. Uh, but you do have like a shell uh, bolster that is clipped around that brass liner there. Uh, and also the handle here is still pinned on. It's a, a um, plastic handle that is uh, pinned in place. So it is separate from the, uh, the, the bolsters that are clipped on. So it's a little bit different than what you will see later in their knives. Uh, stainless steel uh, being used throughout and you have a stainless steel spacer in the middle. You only have the brass liners on the outside portion. You can tell it's one of the earlier ones because the can opener has not moved yet and it is still marked with the patent number. So the older uh, can openers will have a patent number. I think the patent number continues to show on the knives until uh, sometime in the 1960s, even though the patent was granted in, I think, uh, 1946. So, um, but you notice the cap lifter screwdriver is still up by the main blade can opener down by the bale, the older way of setting it up. Um, you have the new blades and everything, you know, more substantial blade with just a typical nail nick as opposed to what you had on the older ones, which was a long pull and a swedge. That's all gone now. Now you just have a nail nick on your typical blade. You do see the Hammer brand USA there. Um, and then the very common, uh, uh, punch or all that uh, we're very used to and you still have the little cutout for you so you can get your thumb in there and pull that up and let's move on to the next one and we'll see a little bit of a difference even though they're both still hammer brand so what we now see is everything is steel uh, it's stainless steel throughout or it might be carbon steel and now we're back to or now we have the shell handles that move around and everything else. It's just uh, enamel paint over the uh, metal here. Nothing fant fantastic about it. It might be a, a plastic uh, wrap that they put on it, but you probably can't see it too well. Well, yeah, you can. These are a little loose. They definitely need to be tightened back up. Um, and uh, But you still have the can opener down at the end uh, same patent number and everything else so for the most part you've just seen the knife lose uh, quite a step in the, in the build quality uh, you can see it definitely there too so this is the um, later 50s we're still talking uh, hammer brand USA uh, but the quality is definitely starting to uh, lose out on there. The uh, nail nick is also gone on the knife. You can still pull it up, but notice the difference on the two sides. You've got one with the nail nick, one without the nail nick. And uh, you can definitely feel the loss of heft. I'll weigh these two and uh, put it in the slideshow at the end uh, so you can see the difference in weight between the two. It's not significant, but you can kind of feel it. And the fact that everything is moving on this really makes it problematic. Okay, the uh, cracked ice one here is probably from the uh, uh, early 1960s. And this was actually an attempt to uh, uh, make the knife a little bit better than what was going on here with the last of the hammer brands. Uh, you now have, um, it is Imperial Providence USA. Um, you have imitation pearl or cracked ice handles. It is a shell handle, but the uh, cracked ice portion um, is a heavy uh, enamel laminate that has been wrapped around the handles and then, uh, uh, I don't know, how hot glued or something in place. Um, 
the handle, the, the Camp King uh, shield is actually molded into the back portion that this uh, wrap is placed around. And the pins also are part of that uh, molded portion of the metal shell handles. But you also notice here that you have really nice brass liners going on with it. And then um, the blades, you've got the can opener. It still has the patent number on it. So that's why I'm suspecting that it is probably uh, um, early 1960s or so. And then um, nice tight uh, cap lifter screwdriver going on. And your typical punch that you see on any of the other ones. Um, let's see how that punch compares to this one. You notice it's more triangular and has a better point going on. Neither one of these has really been used and worn out. This one looks uh, used more, but it really hasn't been used that much. Uh, this one was not used at all. This knife is uh, mint. Um, but you can see that in the uh, 60s, especially the ones that have like the uh, imitation pearl handles, they actually made an attempt to uh, improve the quality on these. And that was followed uh, by these. These were probably made around the same time. These are a little later. You can tell that because now the patent is gone. It's no longer there. Um, and um, all in all, not too bad. You've got a brass liner going down the middle, um, but no other. It's all stainless steel. Uh, you have shell handles. Um, this is uh, an enamel wrap, or it might have been painted, one or the two. Um, and then the Camp King logo here is actually stamped into the handle. I've got a video that shows how that was made. Uh, you can see that it is clipped on the end here. Um, same blaze that you're seeing over there. Imperial, Providence, Rhode Island, USA. This is the last of the tank stamps that of. Uh, uh, Imperial was using before um, they use it all the way up until the 1980s um, this one here notice the difference in the tank stamp it's Imperial Providence USA that was Providence USA is the one they used after Imperial Providence RI and then this is the very last of the Imperial uh, tank stamps that came out sometime in the 60s so this is uh, one of the last of the USA made uh, Camp Kings. You can see that the, uh, the jigging on the handle is much wider than the older ones. Something to look for if you're trying to determine the age. Plus the fact that the uh, can opener is on the same end as the, um, as the blade. Earlier ones will always have the can opener on the back side. This is kind of in the transition. And that brings us to the end of the line for the Imperial Camp Kings. And that's the ones that were made in Ireland. Um, so I think these were made sometime in the uh, 80s or 90s or so. And the quality is just not there. These knives are absolutely horrendous. You still have uh, handles that are shell handles, though they don't look to be shell handles. They actually are. This is actually still... If you look closely, that big old hunk of plastic is actually wrapped around a shell there and then somehow glued or, or with hidden tangs or hidden pins held in place. Um, the the uh, telltale end here is not there anymore, but somehow it is definitely pinned on. You can definitely snap them off. I don't know if you can snap them back on once you do it. I've got two of them, so I will probably take one apart and see what it looks like. This is the one I will take apart because uh, I can barely open the blade on it. It's so bad. Um, they also uh, tend to rust easier than uh, the older uh, Imperial ones that were made in the United States. So this is stainless steel, but the quality just isn't there. It's some kind of cheap 420 stainless steel. Um, they come very dull also. And uh, even the ones straight out of the package were very dull. And it, it's a shame because um, it, it, you make it 
th it makes you think that uh, the knives made in Ireland were just bad, but that's not uh, the case. The Camp King knives that Imperial made in Ireland were bad because um, you, here you have a diamond edge also by Imperial. Oops. And you can see that the uh, diamond edge is a much nicer knife. It's got a much nicer finish going on with the uh, the wood grain here. It's some kind of pack of wood handle. The diamond edge is nicely engraved in there. The blades open smoothly. You've got a nice clean Imperial Ireland stainless going on there. I believe the steel used in these is a 440 steel. Um, everything opens nicely. You've got stainless Inox. And then uh, cap lifter screwdriver and they added a uh, corkscrew on the bottom of this one I think they also made them without that you still have the removable bail going on for it and everything else but you can see that uh, some attention to detail was spent on the diamond edge knife versus the camp king uh, also by Imperial so both knives were by Imperial both were made in Ireland uh, but the camp king was just awful even the uh, Matterhorn uh, line of knives made by uh, Imperial in Ireland is much better than the uh, Ireland-made Camp Kings. Uh, and these are very much similar to what, the, uh, what they were doing with the Camp King. I mean, it's got the same shell handles and everything else. The only difference is, is it's got a red handle to try and imitate like a Swiss Army knife versus the... Uh, uh, Imperial Camp King Ireland these these The only reason to have one of these is if you're collecting all of the uh, Imperial Camp Kings, this is not the one you want to get you want to get a USA made Imperial Camp King or go ahead and buy the uh, the latest one made by Rough Rider because uh, at least that is a solid well-made knife with actual black bone handles uh, uh, you haven't had a, uh, a solid, well-made uh, Camp King knife basically since the 1930s. Uh, in any case, there you have it, my uh, collection of Camp Kings. And you know what? I don't want to end on a sour note, so take a look at this one again. This one is a true beauty. So uh, Imperial did know how to make a Camp King, and they made some really terrific ones. And uh, you can still find these, even in mint condition, even though they were made all the way back in the 1960s. You just got to have to hunt around for them. Um, and they're uh, a really solid, well-made knife. Um, and uh, yeah, I would pay about 30 bucks for this. So just an afterthought on uh, collecting knives like Camp Kings. After all, these were just really economy knives. They were dirt cheap at the time. Um, probably sold for a buck off of a card or something like that. Maybe even less than that. They could have been 25 cents depending on uh, the year that they were being sold. Uh, so these were definitely economy knives even in the beginning. But if you're going to look for ones to collect. My advice would be try and get the ones from pre-World War II. They are the probably the best made out of the bunch and the better condition you can get, the uh, 
the more valuable the knife will be because it is a much um, more solid, well-made knife, um, especially as you can just tell from things like the swedge and everything. So if you can find it from before World War II and in good condition, then I would try and snatch it up and I would say that they're probably going to go somewhere in the 30 to $40 range if it, depending on condition. This one and the condition it's in is probably worth about 15 or $20, which is about what I spent for it. Now, if you're looking for the ones after World War II, um, the best ones probably to get, well, the ones that uh, collectors are going to be more interested in are the ones that still have the, uh, the can opener on the same end as the bale. Uh, and it will have a patent number on it. Uh, again, you're going to want one that's in uh, in fairly good condition. This one's not that great. This one uh, here is in better condition. And uh, you see the can opener here. So this is a better one to get. And this one has a, a proper pinned on scale. Even though it is still something that is a snap on scale over it too. So... Um, that would be what I would be looking for. And again, it'll have the patent number. The, um, the last of the quality made ones, um, will have the patent number on the, uh, uh, the, um, the can opener and, uh, will have the Imperial Prov USA, uh, tank stamp. Uh, after that, it will have the Imperial, let's see, where is it at? Imperial Providence, Rhode Island, with the USA running down the side here. These were made as late as the 1980s, and, um, and they are the cheapest and the poorest quality uh, of the um, Camp Kings that you're going to run into until you run into the Imperial Ireland ones. These ones here are the ones that, dis despite whatever condition they're going to be in, are really a, you know, 10 to $15 knife, including the shipping. But the ones before that with the Providence uh, USA uh, tank stamp and the patent number on the uh, uh, can opener, this one is looking in the, um, it will be a more valuable knife. It'll be in the um, 25 to $30 range, maybe even more depending on the condition. Uh, this one, like I said, is mint, so it's probably worth more than the uh, 25 to $30 um, price tag that you're going to end up having to pay for it. Um, the older, the better. And uh, there's also some other ones out there that are really interesting, like the Camp King Deluxe, which has a uh, one of those old church keys that fold off the bottom. I will try and insert a picture of it. So hopefully that will help you out with your uh, ventures and looking at older Camp King knives and which ones you would be considering buying and such. Uh, for me, the pride of the collection is probably this one followed closely by this one, even though the condition of this one is not that great. Uh, in any case, there you go. There's my Camp Kings. Thank you for visiting Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed your time here. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so that you will be notified when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. See you soon.